Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Mid-South Wrestling Review for the 28th of January 1984. Um, 1984 coming along quite nicely actually. Uh, hope to have a good bit of 84 up this week uh, as we begin the new year, maybe begin the new year in 85. If you are new around here, I'm also a life and business coach. Um, please check out Golden Opportunities Coaching for more information on my coaching practice and also just search Scott Golden Life Coach on uh, your favorite search engine. You'll find all the information you need. Anyway, um, Jim Cornette wants the tag team championship for his team. He uh, carries on. He's glad that uh, they will get a shot at the champion's butt. It is considered a um, non-title branch, and Cornette is dissatisfied with this. But the Midnight Express against TA and Wrestling 2 is here. Um, Cornette makes fun of the ring announcer as he introduces his team. Cornette known for his intros, and obviously Jim Cornette looking phenomenal. This is probably the first real challenge for the... Um, Midnight Express in the area. Obviously, the tar and feathering angle from a couple of weeks ago having a lot to do with the nature that this match is jump-started and uh, the heels tossed across the ring pretty unceremoniously, a couple of hip tosses, and the baby faces run the Midnight Express out of town pretty quickly before the match even really begins. Uh, breakdown on the leg of Dennis Condry and a continuing to work the leg for a couple of minutes. Really a match worth going out of your way to see just because babyface fire and aggression after after uh, being being uh, assaulted and, and accosted and all of that. Um, anyway, the uh, takedown and then the tag to Bobby Eaton. They work on Eaton's leg for a while, dropping elbows and other uh, sundry things onto the leg of Bobby Eaton. They cut the ring off to the champions for several minutes. And then we see tag off there. Um, and again, we see that um, Wrestling 2 is going to go after his opponent, but doesn't fully happen because uh, the knee to the back by uh, Condry from the outside, followed by a backbreaker and some choking. Now the um, challengers, even though I believe, I'm pretty sure this is non title, uh, do cut the ring off on the champions. Uh, for several minutes, we see Condry and Eaton manage to beat down on Wrestling 2. Obviously, the hot tag going to go to Magnum TA, as TA probably the biggest star in Mid-South on the rise, outside of maybe Jim Duggan and, uh, um, Jim Duggan and the Junkyard Dog, but certainly on the rise in terms of growing stars. Yeah, he's it. He gets the hot tag. He comes in, clears house on the Midnight Express, misses on a couple of forearms and punches. And he's a little excited. Anyway, Magnum hits a big drop kick and gets an advantage. And Cornette pulls the top rope down behind the back of the referee. Uh, and um, Cornette makes sure that uh, uh, Magnum spills out over the top rope. There's some sort of weapon that Cornette hands, almost like a... a, a, a Flapjack or Slapjack or something. Cornette hands a weapon off to his team. And uh, they beat down on uh, Wrestling 2 with that disqualification. Obviously, the champions get the vict the uh, disqualification victory and kind of beaten down with that belt or whatever. Mean needless to say, Magnum TA and Wrestling 2 post-match want revenge. They want the Midnight Express again. They, they vow to get their hands on Cornette, vow to get their hands on just about... Anybody who stands in their way at this point, uh, and we're going to see, obviously, somewhere down the road, not too far in the distant future, uh, rematch, and probably several of them around the horn, between the uh, Midnight Express and the champions. Mike Starbuck and Butch Reed up next. Butch Reed, again, I've mentioned before, has fallen off and out of grace a little bit in the sense that, um, you know, he's kind of here in... Enhancement matches. Big body slam by Reed after attacking pretty quickly. Um, obviously, guys do have to come up and down the card. But I think the 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 bloom, bloom might be off the rose on Reed as a 
a main eventer for a little while. I'm not sure on that. I do know he comes back in, I think, 85 as a baby face. Uh, That's when they bring Flair in. But anyhow, press slam and the shoulder tackle. Reed gets the victory. One, two, three. And away we go there. Uh, We then go to uh, Mickey Mickey Henry. Easy for me to say. And Jim Neidhart. Neidhart again, the former tag team champion with uh, Butch Reed that we've just seen. So they'll be doing business somewhere down the road again in the not-too-distant future too. Nightheart manages to go for the arm pretty quickly, pretty aggressive with the arm, back elbows by Nightheart, and again, uh, manages to, to choke the man out, do everything he possibly can, um, and ultimately, you know, you know, we kind of see some, uh, big body slams, and, uh, you know, Real power moves by Nightheart. Nightheart manages to do everything he can. Irish whip there, and a big clothesline uh, by Nightheart. And ultimately, we see uh, the win with almost a lariat. Butch Reed comes out and, and attacks Nightheart from behind, throw, throws him over the top rope, and continues to uh, brawl and try to get rid of his uh, former partner, Masa Ito, and Joe Savoldi, the Savoldi family. Uh, running a territory in the upper New England, so Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine type area. Savoldi's have, have wrestling for quite a while up that way. Masa Ito, though, is, uh, 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 you know, a relative newcomer in the area. Again, Japanese fellow who hasn't really found his niche yet, but uh, I assume big deal in Japan at the time. Anyway, hard chops on his opponent. His opponent is against Savoldi. Savoldi, new in the area, who does do a bunch of journeyman work. But even into the mid-2000s, Savoldi's running in the main and, and uh, that area of New England. And so, uh, big chops and punches by uh, Ma- Masa. And again... Uh, you know, staying with the chops, staying with a really basic offense, choking the man out, uh, the referee having to pull him off again, so obviously they're trying to put him over being, being, uh, Ito as a guy who, for the most part, is, uh, knee, you know, is gonna challenge things here. Uh, Volkov and Darsaw against, um, Taylor and Adias. Adias. Relative newcomer to the area, uh, obviously Volkov and Darsaw have been have been uh, there for a while. Uh, they they both bring out the Russian flag. They're kind of you know trying to be top ish heels. Uh, baby faces come in. House of Fire. Terry Taylor helps uh, Ryan and Diaz clear the ring area, and uh, you know very basic stuff here. Um, Darsaw and Taylor square off. Taylor with a drop kick under the chin. Taylor, uh, then goes to the arm, working the arm for a couple of minutes. Uh, they cut the ring off on Darsaw for several minutes here, and the baby faces do everything from double axe handles and elbows from the second rope to just staying on the arm. Uh, Volkov comes in, and he gets, uh, tripped up with a, uh, I guess you'd kind of say a, a knee drop and, and uh, uh, drop to hold and other things, and, and then Adias comes back in, uh, ultimately a tag off, and, uh, you know, Adias manages to um, cinch up and everything that way. And again, we kind of see uh, Volkov manage to hit the Irish whip, and a big uh, boot under the under the jaw, and again we kind of see that going in a positive direction here. Um, Darsaw comes in, knees and everything hits the hits the stun gun over the top rope. Um, hard shots by Taylor. Taylor manages to hit as many shots as he can, tries to get the man, tries to get Volkov off the, off the apron, um, 
meanwhile, Diaz comes back in to save his partner. All four guys back in the ring. And uh, several chokeouts and the like. Masa Ito manages to come in and cause problems for Diaz. So maybe they're pairing off. Don't really know what that's going to be about. But he interferes on behalf of the Russians. So maybe there's a stable to be built there. Meanwhile, Terry Taylor having to deal with all three guys now on the outside of the ring. The referee has come down to break that up. So lots of chaos in that one. Buddy Landell and Leaping Lanny Poffo. Uh, in your in your next contest here, um, you know Landell back in the area for the first time in a while. Um, Pafo has looked good again. Landell dyeing the hair platinum blonde, you know, and kind of trying to get some extra attention on himself. Pulls the hair, stays on the headlock for a while. Um, you know, doing everything he can. Ride time and. Uh, uh, good mat time for Pafo. Pafo manages to kind of roll up and around and through, uh, hit some hammer locks, and ultimately, um, you know, kind of seeing um, a, a decent little match back elbow by um, by Landell. Landell kind of smooths the hair over, uh, sending. Poffo to the outside a couple of times, even catches him with a back elbow that Poffo bumps to the outside for. Brings him back in with a vertical suplex over the top rope, does Landell. Landell really starting to come into his own here in 1984, just in terms of a talent that uh, you can't deny. He's got something in terms of personality, even during, you know, getting, getting hit uh, even remotely, what could be considered low. Uh, he hops around and really oversells it, um, you know, and, and Landell really shows himself to be a heel. Catches himself with the foot on the bottom rope, and uh, Landell comes back up and again uh, manages the almost, I guess, reverse chin lock, camel clutch type maneuver. Landell not willing to take a backward step. Um, hard shots by Poffo, and again, Poffo manages to get a body slam. On his adversary, he tries to go in, do the outside-in splash, and again, second time in the match, breaks the plane with the um, foot on the bottom rope, does Landell. Landell catches um, Poffo coming off the top rope, or second rope, with the moonsault, but brings the knees up. Landell looks dazed and confused, but manages to continue to fight for himself, finds himself on the apron, um... Uh, Brings Poffo over the top rope to the floor, the the uh, inside out spot, and I believe goes to work on him on the floor. Um, the referee's discretion is does not call uh, disqualification on that, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Irish whip and Landell with the back elbow, and then hits the corkscrew elbow. One, two, three, Landell with a victory. Then we close again with another music video look at the Rock and Roll Express coming to town quickly. Uh, we'll be back with more right after this.